How's it going Crystal Palace fans? We are here for the Crystal Palace season preview and this is going to be my favorite one yet because Crystal Palace are the most exciting team and they are now my second favorite team and my second club going into the Premier League season and I just want to get straight into things. What Crystal Palace have done this summer has been unbelievable bringing in so many top top class players so much young players with so much potential so much quality to show. And the oldest player they brought in so far is Joachim Anderson. And he was phenomenal last year playing for Fulham in the Premier League. And not only bringing in some tremendous talent, some tremendous quality with some unbelievable potential and upside, they have gone out and absolutely wiped ship, losing a bunch of players. But you can't complain of who they've lost. They've lost all the dead wood, all the dead weight, all those players who were eating up contracts, the overage players who they didn't need anymore. And being able to do that all in basically one summer is unbelievable. I can't give them enough credit. I'll just go through the names here, guys. They're all on freeze. They're not getting back money for any of these guys, but they're recouping all the wages. They're not having to pay these guys the big sums of money they were before. Patrick Van Arnholt, Andro Andros Townsend, Mohamed Sako, James McCarthy, Wayne Hennessy. They also lost uh, Nathaniel Klein, Gary Cahill, Scott Dan, Connor Wickham. The age of those players are crazy. 34, 35, 30. 34, 30, 31, 30, 30. Like, that is unbelievable business from Crystal Palace. People look at business and they just think, business is just arrivals. No, it's the when you get dead weight out of your club. I know this as good as anybody as a Manchester United fan. We don't clear out dead wood. We don't get out the dead weight in time. And then they just sit there and like recoup wages and wages and wages. Crystal Palace have gotten rid of all the dead wood in one summer, basically. There are arguably some players who can still go, but they've turned this team into an unbelievable project that young players and young talent are going to go, I want to play for them. Look who's just joined them. Let's go play for them. Look who their manager is. The project they're doing here is fantastic. It's phenomenal. They're not splashing loads of cash. They're using it wisely. They're being smart. I'll just talk about who they brought in quickly, and then I want to move on to the manager, the project, what their team really has for players, and where I think they're finished, and their player of the year. But guys, I want to start now about talking to their rivals. I've done this in separate videos, but I just got to talk about it again before I move on to a bit more. Mark Gailly has signed from Chelsea for Crystal Palace. The fee, I think, was around 20 to 25 million pounds. They've also brought in Joachim Anderson, the Leon center back. I think that deal turned out to be around 15 to 20 million pounds. And they also brought in Michael Olise. I, I can't praise this signing enough. I think that was unbelievable to bring him in, championship young player of the year. He looks phenomenal looking at his stats. He looks like a tremendous talent. I can't lie, I didn't know a heck of a lot until one of my subscribers told me about him in the comments, and I thank you guys so much because I've looked into him, I've done some research, and he looks phenomenal watching some of his highlight clips. He looks like a top, top player. Also bringing in Connor Gallagher, who I thought was a shining light in that West Brom side last year. A player for me, when I watched West Brom, I was always excited to watch. I knew he was going to do something. He was going to play a beautiful pass. He was just going to show up in the midfield and work his behind off. And they have brought him in on loan from Chelsea. And today, or I haven't seen this one yet, but they've brought in Rennie Matthews, a goalkeeper from Sunderland. I'm guessing he's youthful. I really haven't seen much about him. I've just seen this for the first time now. But that is he is 27, so I can't say I know much about him, guys. But I will say he has joined the club. And I want to go on to say Crystal Palace are also looking to make a bunch more signings, or a couple at least. I know they're rumored to bring in another center back. They also want to bring in a striker. And there's rumors of likes of Full Genie and another midfielder. Crystal Palace this summer is not over, so prepare yourself for some more action for Crystal Palace. I just want to go over the squad because this squad is phenomenal. Guaita and Net, you still got Jack Butlin to back them up. A center back pairing of Joaquim Anderson and Mark Gai. Or Cheku Kuyate, who has been told he will be moving back to center back. You still got James Tompkins there for a bit of experience. And the wide players, you got Tyreek Mitchell and Joel Ward. For me, I think Martin Kelly needs a leave. You need to bring in a starting right back instead of Joel Ward. But nonetheless, phenomenal back line. A massive upgrade from last year's Gary Cahill and Scott Dan. A midfield of Gerald Radovald, Milovojevic, Connor Gallagher, Eze, 
Olise, such a great midfield now and so forward thinking with some amazing defensive midfielders. Attacking wise, you got Zaha, Benteke, Mateta, and Ayu. Still, I think they need to bring in an attacker. Reese Nelson is very, very heavily linked, and it looks like they will also bring in a new striker. It's going to be very interesting to see what other business Crystal Palace does, but I want to talk about their manager, Patrick Vieira. This is massive for me, guys. Bringing in a name like Patrick Vieira brings so much talent to your club, shows that the project is something real, and he, he's just got the gumption to go for it. I've I haven't really seen him manage before. I can't comment on that too much, guys. So I don't want to act like I have. But I know just the name, Patrick Vieira. If I was a footballer, it would attract me straight away to Crystal Palace. And the new project he started is a young core, a team he can progress with, a team he can stick with. And I really hope Crystal Palace isn't ruthless and they don't go, okay, you're, you're on a bad run, chopped, you're out. I don't think they're going to do that because it's you You can see the clear project that Patrick Vieira is building. Young, hungry players with high, high potential, good price, and he's just forming a new team, a nice new team. I think he'll want to, he'll want to keep Zaha. Zaha might want to stay after a little while. And I just think Patrick Vieira is growing a team that, for me, are going to look to, for mid-table. And for years to come, I think they could be pushing higher if they can continue this project and keep the players that they have and they're going to continue to get. But guys, I want to give you my prediction for where I think they will finish. I have Crystal Palace finishing at 11th. You guys might think that is quite high, but I have a load of praise for what they're doing. They're really going out there. They're getting everything done. And what they've done is fantastic. A young manager with a lot of potential in Patrick Vieira. A young potential core, young potential team. And they just... For me, if it's just an exciting project, it might take a couple of games to gel. It might take a month to gel. But I think Patrick Vieira is going to be a quality manager. I think he has a quality, quality team on his hands now. And he's building himself a fantastic structure. And there's more to come too. Like I said, there's probably going to be another two or three signings, I feel like, for Crystal Palace. For me, I just think they're way better than some teams below them. And they could even challenge higher up the table if they get the the right team going and they can find the right formation and tactics early on but it's still gonna be a very good season for crystal palace i'm just gonna throw out there my player of the year is gonna be wilfred zaha i think it's quite obvious but i also feel like if they do sign reese nelson that could be a breakout player right there for me but if they don't i think the breakout player and their young player of the year was gonna be breakout player will be connor gallagher and their young player of the year will be michael elise but guys those are my predictions zaha player of the year Olise, Young Player of the Year, and my Breakout Player of the Year is Connor Gallagher. And I have Crystal Palace finishing 11th in the year, 11th in the table, sorry guys. But let me know, Crystal Palace fans and Premier League fans, where you guys think Crystal Palace will finish, what you guys think of my predictions, and if you guys think I'm wrong or correct. But I love what Crystal Palace are doing. They've won me over, they've won my heart over. And i just like to say good job, Crystal Palace. But guys, I'm going to have many more coming out for you for the rest of the day. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. I'm pumping out the best for you guys. Hit that sub button. Hit the like button. It means the world to me. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll be back for another one very soon. Peace, guys.